Dollars. Today we present The Silver Siren, which is based on a true life story appearing in the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all Hearst Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. The Silver Siren was produced in the New York studios of the General Broadcasting Company. From time immemorial, the lure of lost treasure has captivated the imagination, and so long as the world remains, so long will adventure and treasure seekers continue to search for the immense wealth and riches which in tons of silver and gold coins, blazing gems and priceless church vessels, lie strewn in the fathomless depths of David Jones' locker. There is no need of an age-worn chart decorated with skulls and crossbones and written with the blood of some dying sailor man to locate the treasure. It is well known that there are old Spanish galleons whose hard wood hulks lie rotting in quiet places filled with wooden chests of real doubloons and pieces of eight or many an English brig with a cargo of pearls and gorgeous jewels and silver ducatoons scattered in the sands of the ocean's bed. Today's front page drama tells the tale of pirate plunder, the scene of which is near Southampton, Long Island. It is the year 1865. In a prison yard by the flickering light of torches, workmen are putting the final touches to a wooden gallows. Inside the prison, a solemn-faced group of officials surround a man attired in black trousers and white shirt, which is opened at the throat. One of the men addresses the prisoner. Robert Brady, have you anything to say before you are hanged? You found me guilty, didn't you? Yes, of course. Then what is there to say? Well, is there no one to whom you wish to send a last message? No, let's get it over with. But it's not two o'clock yet. You still have a few minutes left. For what? To tell us what we want to know. Oh, you want a confession, eh? All right. If it'll make you feel any better, I'll confess. That's it. Go ahead, Brady. <laughs> Why not? I turned the trick, didn't I? Come on now. Give us your story. Well, during the war, I served on the USS Potomac until I was taken prisoner. Then I was sent to Dartmoor Prison until it was all over. When I got out, I looked about for something to turn my hand at. I heard that the brig Wellington was sailing from New Orleans. So I went down to the wharf and lined up with the other applicants. All right, my hearty. Keep in line there. Skipper will be coming topside any minute now. Hey, you. Me? Yes, you. Get in line somewhere. Aye, aye, sir. How about letting me in here, mate? Sure. Come here. Thanks, mate. Come on, get in line. Hey, where's this tub bound for? Philly. Philadelphia up north? Yeah, that's where. Good. That'll oh, suit no, me on. as well as any place. What's she carrying? I don't know. Do you know, mate? Oh, what? You know what this brig's carrying this trip? No, that wasn't oh, cotton, I heard. Thank God it ain't cattle. All right, my hearties. Here comes the skipper. Uh, good morning, Captain. All right, Mr. Hawkins. This is all it's reported, sir. Very well. I'll start looking them over. Aye, right, aye, right, sir. Hey, you. Yes, yeah, sir. Step this way. The captain wants to see you. Yes, yeah, sir. Morning, Captain. Morning. How tall are you? Six two, Captain. Wait. Out of 95, sir. You'll do. Mr. Hawkins, sign this man on. Next. Aye, aye, sir. Yeah, you. You're Nick. Come over here to this barrel and sign. Morning, Captain. Morning. You're about 6'1", aren't you? 6'1 and a half, Captain. Wait. 180 split, Captain. Been in the ring, sir. Half an hour. Mm, you'll do. Report to the mate over there. Aye, aye, sir. All right. Next, man. I guess that's me, Captain. How tall are you? 5'10", Captain. Mm, what do you weigh? 165, sir. Mm. Right weight for my size, Captain. You seem small compared to some of these others. Beg pardon, Captain, but you can't tell the contents by the size of the box. Oh, sir. A mouse has been known to have caused a stampede of elephants, sir. Uh, you mean... I'm no physical giant, but I have brains, Captain, and I can use them. You'll do. Report to the mate. Oh, uh, what's your name, my man? Brady, sir. Very good. That's all. Next. Oh, that's all of you. All right. We see what's on. And you'll get your pay when we dock. Is that clear? Aye, aye, sir. Now then, I suppose the captain picked you. He did. All right, here's pen and ink. Sign here. Now then, uh, Brady, is it? It is. Right. Now then, Brady, we sail at dawn, and you'll get your pay when we dock. Is that clear? Yes, but... But what? When do we stow the cargo? You don't stow the cargo. That was all taken care of last night. I thought it was clear at the time, and after we set sail, I found that the other members of the crew thought so, too. But they turned it off with a joking remark about being glad they got out of so much hard work. Yes, but how did I'm you... I'm coming to that. A few days out, 
I happened to be passing the captain's cabin. I heard my name mentioned, and so I stopped and listened at the door. If we can keep it quiet a few days more, everything will be fine, Captain. Well, we've managed so far, Mr. Hawkins. Why are you so worried about Brady? He's too smart. The others never bother using what's in their heads, but these brains work overtime. They gave me a funny look when I signed him on. When I told him the cargo already been stowed. And doesn't prove he doesn't know anything about the hundred thousand dollars in silver we got on board. No, but if he ever gets the idea we're carrying anything more valuable than molasses and cotton, well, God knows what may happen. Oh, I think you're getting the jitters, Mr. Hawkins. Mm. Better not take so many rum rations for a while. You think I don't know men, Captain? Very well, sir. You can't say I didn't warn you. Much obliged, Mr. Hawkins, but I don't see what's to be done as yet. But I keep that Brady under close watch, Captain. Well, we have no proof there's any need to do that. Yes, but yes, but yes, nothing no. you hear anything further. <laughs> 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 ah, go ahead. Go ahead and laugh if you like. Uh, there must be billions of riches lying at the bottom of the sea. Oh, mate. Oh, oh, oh. Go ahead, sailor. Don't let him stop you. What's all this about billions of riches at the bottom of the sea? Well, we've been spinning some yarns tonight, and I was telling the lads here about some of the tales I heard. Old wives' tales. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine, Brady? He says there are hundreds of ships lying rotting in Davy Jones' lap. Yeah. With iron-bound chests of gold and silver. Anybody's for the taking. But try and take it. <laughs> well, why not? Uh, those English and Spanish ships you talk about must have sunk hundreds of years ago. All right, all right. But I can tell you about a wreck back in 1820, only 45 years ago. My old malarkey over there must remember hearing about it. You remember the French boat, the young Henri? Yeah, I do. Well, what about it? Well, I'll tell you what about it. A rich Frenchman set sail for France from the island of Martinique. He had three million dollars worth of coins, jewels, and gold and silver plates. The boat struck a reef just off the coast of France and sank with every man on board. That's what. God let that soul. And no one has recovered the treasure yet? No, and it's in shallow water, too. Whereabouts? Well, I'm not telling all I know. Someday, maybe I can raise enough money to go there myself to get the rich haul. That's right, matey. Keep any news like that to yourself. I wouldn't chatter about it either. All hands on deck. Storm coming up. Wait a minute, you two. Shh. Just wait. Well, wait a minute. So you want money to search for the treasure, do you? Sure, but how... If I get you some money... Will you cut me in on whatever you find? Say, are you crazy? Not at all. Answer me. Well, I... I, I... Why do I come in on this? I want you as a witness. And we need your personal services. What do you mean, my personal services? You'll find out soon enough. Well, mate, what do you say? Will you cut me in? Okay, I'll do it. Let's Where write out go? an agreement first. Here. We'll use a sheet of this logbook here. Okay. I agree to give Robert Brady... One half of my finding. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on there. I never agreed to a half. I'm in on this, too. Don't forget. All right. One third, then. Same for me. You sure you can raise some money, Brady? Positive. How much? I know where I can get $100,000 in silver and bullion. And you can have one third. What? Oh, You'll give me one third of your sunken treasure. Think of it, men. That'll mean a million dollars for each of us. You will. Here, give me that pen. I'll sign the agreement. Good. Where do I come in? You'll have to make a deal with our friend here for your share of the treasure. But for your services and your silence, I'll give you the other third of the hundred thousand. Is it a go? Give me that pen. Now, where's your hundred thousand? On this ship. Uh, you're crazy. I'll say he must be. That's nothing but molasses and cotton in the hold. Did you help stow the cargo before we sailed? No, but... Then that's keep not... your mouth shut and do as I say. Now get this. Yes, and uh, what happened then, Brady? I waited until we were a few miles off Southampton Light. 
It was a dark, moonless night when we decided to take over the brig. Just at eight bells, we met near the wheel. Hello? Hello? Pump hand already? Aye, aye. When I say now, let him have it. Then we'll pitch him overboard. Huh? Aye, aye. Now. <laughs> Over the side with him. Good. Now for the captain. What are you men doing here? Where's that hundred thousand dollars in silver? Hundred thousand? What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about, Captain. We want that treasure you're carrying. You must be drunk or mad. There's no treasure on board the ship. Don't you believe, mate? He's lying. I... How dare you? I... There. That'll take care of him for a while. We'll go below and find the silver for ourselves, mates. Come on. Come on, Come on now. Can we ever find it amongst all these bales? Here, take this sword and prod the bales. Okay, give it a... What about the barrel? I'll show you. Take that other axe and follow me. Hurry, come on. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? I don't believe there's any silver on this boat at all. The captain was telling the truth. You are lying. Aye, that's right. Listen, mates. I'm telling you the truth. I swear it. I heard the captain and the mate talking about it the day I told you about it and we made our bargain. There's silver aboard this boat in the hold someplace. Well, you got up in a mess, Brady. And there's a death penalty for anybody who takes over a ship. Not to mention killing an officer. Aye, he's right, Brady. You fools. Yeah? Do you think I'd risk my neck for nothing? I tell you there's silver here someplace. Stop grumbling and find it. Yeah, we'll stop grumbling. But we'll settle with you first. What do you mean? We're doomed now for what we've done. Another life won't matter. Keep back. What are you going to do? We'll show you, Brady. Drive into the corner, mate. I'm ready. No. 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 Come on, Gaga. Get him in the corner. Get him in. Look. Listen. What did I tell you? Silver. Oh, now be quick, you fools. Help me carry this up to the lifeboats. Aye, aye. Aye. Wait, wait. One thing more. Hey, what are you doing? Are you setting fire to the ship? Of course. Hurry to the lifeboat. Hurry. 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 So, you finally got to shore, eh? Well, then what did you do? Buried the silver until I could return for it. Would you like to know where? Yes, that's what we want to know before you hang. Everything's ready. Come on, Brady. Oh, one moment. Where did you bury the silver, Brady? In the sands of the beach off Southampton. Yes, but where? Where? <laughs> that's for you to find out. <laughs> Be sure to read the full details of this and other thrilling stories of buried treasure. You'll find them in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly Magazine under the title, Countless Millions in Shipwreck Treasure. This is Wentworth Announcing. And now your own announcer will tell you about the many other interesting articles and true life stories which will appear in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly. The magazine distributed with all first to Sunday newspapers from coast to coast.
Today we present The Masquerade Mystery, a radio play based on a true story of adventure, appearing in the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all first Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. The Masquerade Mystery was produced in the New York studios of the General Broadcasting Company and features Percy Moore in the role of Dr. Betty Yoss. The French detective police are well known for their modern and scientific methods of investigating crime. Next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly, Mr. H. Ashton Wolfe relates another of his personal experiences while connected with the Sûreté. According to his story, he and his chief, the famous Dr. Bertillon, summoned to the beautiful country house of the Comtesse Dumas. <laughs> 